Good morning everyone. Today we're going to talk about activity-based costing system or ABC system. Okay. So just a quick review, direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. So syempre, pag tinanong natin yung product cost, ito yung sum ng tatlo na to. And overhead, ang actual overhead natin, again, para hindi natin makalimutan, summarize into t -Rood. That includes taxes, indirect materials, indirect labor, and insurance. Again, the expired portion only. And then the rent, pending repairs and maintenance. We also have utilities and depreciation. Okay, so ito yung mga actual only natin na overhead. But later on, with ABC, we are trying again to simplify or we are trying again to estimate the overhead cost. But this time, sabi nga natin from the term itself, based on the activities. So we have, <clears throat> excuse me, product costing allocation methods. We have the sing single or plant-wide rate or PWR. Sometimes it is called traditional. Okay, so from the term itself, single, isa lang yung overhead rate natin. Okay, ibig sabihin, isa lang din yung cost driver natin. So, regardless kung maraming departments or maraming activities ang pagdadaanan ng product bago siya mabuo, isa lang ang cost driver niyan. Usually, kung ano yung pinakamaraming na-incur o nagagamit natin, yun yung naging cost driver natin. And by the way, pag sinabi mo naman kasi yung cost driver, parang ito yung mga activities uh, which have uh, direct cost and effect relationship sa pag-incur natin ng cost. The more activities or the more cost driver na ma-incur natin, the higher the cost that we incur. Okay. So, we also have the multiple production department rates or sometimes called departmental rates. So, kung ilan yung departments, ganun karami rin yung overhead rates natin. Okay. And of course, under ABC, so kung ilan yung activities natin, ganun din karami kung ilan yung pool rates natin. Ang tawag lang naman natin ay pool rates pero overhead rates lang din naman po yung tinutukoy niyan. At ang overhead rate natin is still the budgeted overhead over your budgeted level of activity. Regardless kung anong method, when we compute for the overhead na i-apply natin, that would be, di ba ito yung rate natin, overhead rate. Regardless kung ano man yung ating method, ang overhead natin na i-apply would be equal to the overhead rate tapos multiply natin ang actual level. Ganun na ganun din parang normal costing system. Alright. Yun nga lang, under normal costing system, gumagamit tayo either isang rate lang para mas simple or maraming departments para medyo mas malapit sa katotohanan or activity-based costing method na mas malapit lalo pa sa katotohanan. Kasi the more uh, the more basis ng ating computation ng, ng overhead, ibig sabihin, we are using the more or most appropriate uh, mga cost drivers. So, hierarchy of activity levels. Meron kasi tayong mga cost drivers na unit level. What does it mean? Ito yung mga costs that can be directly apportioned to volume or pwedeng uh, associated sa units. Example po, direct materials, direct labor costs, DLH, or MH or machine hours. Ibig sabihin, the more uh, units of product that we produce, the more DM, DL, DLH, MH that we use or incur. So, ganun po yung bisibin. Associated siya with the per unit basis. Kapag sinabi mong batch level naman yung cost driver natin, from the term itself, batch run. So, yung cost naman natin directly apportioned to the batch run or by group. So, for this type of cost, yung mga activities are consumed in direct proportion to the number of batch runs for each product. For example, setup cost. Ordering costs, material handling, and transportation costs. Yung mga ito kasi, hindi naman natin gagawin to sa na by unit. Ibig sabihin, we set up per batch. Umu-order tayo, syempre hindi per unit. By batch po, by group ang pag-order natin. Same with materials handling and transportation costs. Hindi tayo nagsiship 
pa isa-isa, nagsiship tayo by batch. That's the idea of the cost drivers under the batch level. Okay? General naman yung sinasabi natin. Sometimes kung sobrang laki at sobrang bigat or sobrang uh, talagang hindi mo siya ma-ship by batch per piece talaga. So, nagiging uh, unit level na po siya. Pero again, generally, sa dami ng raw materials natin and other uh, costs, talagang by, by group or by batch yung ating uh, pag-setup, pag-order, etc. Yan. Meron din tayong product level cost. Yung mga product level cost, ito naman yung direct portion to the product which assumes na yung certain activities are consumed to develop or permit production or different products. One good example is research and development. Talaga naman associated with that product, yung research, yung pag-research ng product na yan, pag-develop ng product na yan until such time na ma-produce, ma-design, ma-produce, ma-benta in the market, ma-reach niya yung peak niya, yung ba sabi natin yung product life cycle after niya ma-reach yung peak niya magde-decline later on and then uh, pag nag-decline na hanggang sa mawala na yung product or pwede rin naman na i-improve mo yung product para ma-reintroduce in the market it will again reach the peak magde-decline tapos uh, pwede rin mawala eventually yung product kaya pag sinabi mong product level ito talaga ay associated or a portion to the product itself Okay. We have facility level. Kaya lang ang problema with the facility level. level. Uh, itong cost kasi na to associated with the general manufacturing process. So parang uh, nagiging problem siya sa ABC environment. One good example is travel cost. Another would be director's fees. And general administration. Kung titignan nyo parang uh, halos mag-classify na siya sa OPEX. Pero we are pertaining pa rin sa product cost. Now, uh, kaya nga, minsan, itong mga facility level cost, depende po sa organization or company, uh, kung ito ba ay igagamitin or i-assign talaga sa products. But generally, pag tinanong din sa exam, facility level, makikita mo naman po, it's more on general administration, director fees, at travel costs nila. Ayan. ABM, or activity-based management. The philosophy that activities identified for ABC can also be used for cost management and performance evaluation. So in ABM or activity based management we try to identify the two activities it's either uh, di ba ang daming activities bago magawa yung isang product yung mga activities na yun identify natin ito ba ay value added or ito ba ay non value added activities value pwede rin iba ang tawag ay value adding or non value adding activities ano ba ibig sabihin ng value added and non value added activities pag sinabi mo value added activities Ito po yung mga na-perceive na mga customers na nag increase ng worth of the product or service. In return, yung mga customers, they are willing to pay. And normally, ang kasama rito ay yung mga production activities. Because the customer really believe na itong mga activities na to add value from the term itself, add value to the product. And they are willing to pay for it. Pero yung mga non-value added activities, ito naman yung uh, cost of the product pero hindi naman niya na-increase from the term itself, non-value added. Hindi na-increase yung value to customers. Pero uh, most of the non-value added activities, hindi naman natin basa-basa matanggal. So ang gusto natin mangyari dito, di ba? Activity-based costing. More activities that we have, ibig sabihin more cost that we incur e eh, kung ma-eliminate eh, natin yung ibang non-value added activities without sacrificing the quality of the product or service, in that way, mapapababa natin yung cost ng product. Kung hindi natin uh, uh, babaguhin yung selling price, yung margin natin tataas talaga. Pero again, hindi dapat bumaba yung quality ng product because you are uh, eliminating 
the non-value added activities or sum of the non-value added activities. Okay, so that is activity-based management. Again, we try to identify ano yung mga non-value added activities and then we try to eliminate without sacrificing the quality of the product. Paano masasabi na hindi na sacrifice yung quality ng product? If the customers perceive na same pa rin yung quality or hindi nila nakikita na mayroon decline in the value of the product or service. Ayan. So, we will now solve some problems. Okay, problem number one. Ang question po natin, the monthly quality control cost, actually mag upload ako ng bagong handout. So, nagdagdag ako ng mga problems. So, this is one of the problems na dinagdag natin. So, the monthly quality control cost assigned to face mask using activity-based costing is... Ayan. So, pag tinignan natin yan, may makikita ko sa choices na 88.64 per order. 525.50, lower than the cost using traditional system. Usually, ang ABC kino-compare yung uh, cost niya, yung cost ng product na, na kukuha natin with that of the traditional system. Okay, so let's solve for this one. So, Integrity has used a traditional costing system to apply quality control costs uniformly to all products at a rate of 14.5% of direct labor costs. Okay, so using traditional, ito na po agad yun. So, monthly direct labor cost for face mask is $27,500. So, compare natin yung traditional with ABC. So, ang tanong lang naman po, di ba? Yung monthly quality control cost assigned. So, yung OH natin, OH actually. So, that would be 14.5% uh, kapag traditional. Multiply natin with the $27,500, the direct labor cost. So, the answer would be 3,987.50 using traditional. Pero using ABC, ano po ang ating overhead? Okay. So, in attempt to distribute quality control costs more equitably, Integrity is considering activity-based costing. The monthly data shown in the chart below have been gathered for face mask. So, there are three activities bago magawa yung face mask. Incoming material inspection, in-process inspection, and product certification. Okay. Now, meron tayong cost driver dito. Minsan hindi naman ibibigay yung cost driver, pero madadama mo naman kung ano yung cost driver. Kasi kung ano yung mga pinaka-appropriate or pinaka-close dun sa activity. So, kapag incoming material inspection, type of material. Uh, in process inspection, number of units. Product certification per order. Now, ito yung cost rates natin or overhead rates. So, sabi natin, kada activity, may kanya-kanya po tayong overhead rate. Okay? Tapos, ito na po yung quantity natin for face mask. Kaya, for ABC, ang overhead natin would be, for incoming material inspection, that would be 11.50 per type, multiply natin ang 12 types. Okay? And then for in-process inspection, bakit IMS to? Oops. Again, in process inspection, that would be 0.14, multiply natin ng 17,500. And then for product certification, we have 77 per order, multiply natin with the number of orders. Madali lang naman sa ABC. Yun nga lang, mababa ng konti kasi the more activities na ilagay sa exam, ganun karaming computation ng overhead lang gagawin natin. Pero, multiply mo lang naman yung rate, with the quantity or with the actual level, yun na po yung mismo overhead natin. So once may overhead na tayo, add lang natin yung materials and labor, we will now come up with our, with our uh, product cost. So to continue, ang ABC natin ay 4,513 para na po sa lahat yan. Now, if we go back sa mga choices natin, 
walang 4,513. So uh, we will just compare the traditional and uh, the ABC. So comparing 3,9,8,7,5 and 4,5,1,3, mas mataas si ABC ng magkano? 525.50. So ang answer po natin sa problem natin would be, coming back here, it's 525.50. 0.5 higher than the cost using the traditional system. So, ang answer natin ay letter D. Okay. Uh, this is another problem. So, setup time for a product is 6 hours. So, a firm that uses JIT just in time. So, mayroong mga reduction. And produces the same product has reduced setup time to 30 minutes. Setup labor is 24 pesos per hour. So value added costs are. So value added costs. So magkano na lang yung natitira natin? Ah, ilan na lang yung natitira natin uh, setup time? So that would be 24 na setup labor per hour. Multiply natin ng 30 minutes or 0.5 hour. Okay? 0.5 lang. Kasi sabi dito reduce to. Mag-ingat po dito. So, reduce to, yun na mismo yung oras natin. So, that would be 12 pesos. So, the answer is letter D. Pero pwede minsan mabago, ito ay reduced by 30 minutes. So, ang magiging sagot natin ay 24 times dating 6, nabawasan na 30 minutes, 5.5. Ang magiging answer natin ay 132. So, be careful sa so reduce by at reduce to. So, ang answer natin sa problem na to ay 12 kasi reduced 2. Okay. So, we have another problem. So, for Samsonite company that makes a variety of luggage, the activity centers and budgeted information for factory overhead for the year are... So, again... Pag tinignan natin yung requirements dito, we're going to use traditional costing method at aalamin natin yung overhead rate using traditional tapos cost ng class A and cost ng class B kasi we have two products, class A and class B. Okay? Tapos, uh, traditional muna yung gagamitin natin. Sabi dito, overhead is applied based on the number of direct labor hours. Ayan. So, how do we compute for the overhead rate? So, overhead rate natin, magkano ba yung overhead na budgeted natin? So, add lang po natin lahat ng overhead natin kahit di pa natin nababasa lahat ng given. So, ang total overhead natin ay 75 million. Yan. So, 75 million. That's the budgeted overhead. So, ang ating level of activity... DLH po ang basis natin. Eh, pag renounce mo yung problem, hindi binigay kung ano yung estimated or budgeted na DLH. Pero, ito po kasi activity center rate or overhead rate. So, 120 per DLH. Ibig sabihin, pa, bago makuha itong 120, ang formula niyan ay 45 million divided by the budgeted overhead. A budgeted na DLH. So, again, 45 million over the budgeted level, yung DLH na hinahanap natin is equal to 120. So, ang DLH po natin ay 375,000. So, that's the budgeted DLH. Again, sometimes it's not given, pero compute mo naman yung budgeted DLH. So, divide natin ito ng 375,000. And that will give us the overhead rate of 200 per DLH. So that's the answer number one, 200 per DLH. Ayan. Next, the two classes of luggage were produced in October, class A and class B. So tinatanong po ngayon, ano yung total cost ng class A at class B? So for class A muna tayo, so we just have to get the DM, the DL, and the OH. Ang DM po natin for class A ay 200,000. Ang DL natin ay 150,000. Ang OH natin ay gagamit ng rate ng 200. 
mumultiply natin ang actual VLH ng class A. Ang VLH po ng class A ay 1,200. So, multiply natin ang 1,200. Ayan. So, ang ating OH ay 240,000. So, ang total cost ng class A ay pag in natin, that would be 590,000. So, that's the answer in number 2. It's 590,000. Okay. Tinanong total cost ng class B. For class B, so DM, so we have 150,000. DL, we have 300,000. Ayan. And then your OH is 200. Multiply natin ang actual na DLH, which is, which is 7,500. Yeah, so that is 1.5 million. Kaya ang total cost ng class B ay 1 million 950,000. Ayan. So answer natin sa number 3, 1 million 950,000. Okay? These are your answers using traditional costing method. If you have questions, ilagay lang ulit sa ating chat box. So, let us continue using ABC. Buti na lang, ang ABC, binigay na overhead rates. So, wala na tayong problemahin sa pag-compute ng overhead rates. But just in case hindi ibinigay yung overhead rate natin or activity center rate or pool rates natin, hindi binigay. Itong overhead cost natin, hindi divide lang natin with the, ano, with the amount of your cost driver. So, in our case, binigay na yung rate. So, sabi rito sa number 4, what is the total overhead applied to class A? Pero tinatanong din naman sa number 5, yung, to yung cost per unit of class A. Kaya pagsamayin na natin. So, for class A, DM and DL. So, we have 200,000 na DM, 150,000 na DL. And for your OH, kung ilan yung activities natin, we have 4, ganun din karami yung lines ng OH natin. Ang rate natin, i-multiply sa kanya-kanyang actual level of activity. So, we have 3 per pound sa weight of materials. Ano ba ang weight of materials natin ng class A? Weight, eto po, 15,000. And then, 30 per shape. Ilang shapes po ba tayo meron? 15,000 din. So, 30 times 15,000. Ayan. And then, sabi rito, 120 per DLH. Sa assembly, ilang DLH meron? 1, 2. So, 120 times 1,200 na DLH. Ayan. And then, lastly, 80 per machine hour. So, we have sewing machine hours na 1,800. So, 80 times 1,800. And then, from, uh, from there, we're going to compute kung magkano yung overhead applied and that is 783,000. Pag sama na po natin yung apat na yan. So that's the answer in number 1. 783,000. Ang tinatanong sa number 2 ay cost per unit of class A. So i-add lang natin yung DM and DL and divide it by, by the number of units produced. So ang total cost natin ay 1,133 1,133,000. Okay, yung total cost natin. To get the unit cost, the number of units produced ay ilan ba? 1,000. So therefore, ang ating unit cost ay 1,133. Ayan, 1,133. For class B, tinatanong ay total cost. Lagay mo na natin answer dito. 1, 133. Okay, so total cost ng class B. Class B. So we have our DM, DL, and your OH. So ang DM natin sa class B ay 150,000, then 300,000 na DL directly bore. For your overhead, again, we have 3, 30, 120, and 80. Mumultiply natin sa actual level naman ng class B. So... <coughs> So, for OH, sunod-sunod naman po yung mga ito. So, pwede mo na i-copy. 50,000, 35,000, 75, and 12,500. Ang total po natin na overhead ay 
3,100,000. Okay? So, kaya naman, ang total cost natin ay 3,550,000. So, that's the answer in number 6. 3,550,000. So, as you can see, mas mahaba ng computation kapag ABC. Kasi nga, we are trying to compute OH per activity. As compared kapag uh, traditional costing method, mabilis lang, maiksi lang kasi isa lang yung overhead rate natin. Pero ang tanong, alin ang mas accurate sa kanilang dalawa? Of course, it's ABC. Why? Kasi, itong mga activities like materials handling, may kinala, talaga bang DLH ang gagamitin mo? Siyempre hindi. It's more on weight weight of your materials. Ibig sabihin, kapag ABC, you will be able to use the most appropriate cost driver for every activity. Unlike kapag uh, plant-wide rate or traditional cost method, balik tayo sa taas, regardless, kung ano yung cost driver natin, ginamit natin DLH lang sa pag-solve ng ating overhead rate. Eh, hindi naman dependent sa DLH yung cutting Hindi naman dependent yung DLH sa, ay yung materials handling sa uh, DLH. Kaya naman, nai-ignore or nadi-disregard yung mga appropriate na cost driver kapag ang ginagamit natin ay traditional. So, namimili lang tayo, pinapasimple lang natin. Pero pinakamabilis at pinakasimple talaga to Kaya lang, syempre, if you, are try, if you are trying to answer yung question sa una natin na what is the true cost of the product, Siyempre, kapag mas simple at iisa lang overhead rate na ginagamit mo, mas malayo siya sa katotohanan. So, activity-based costing method as compared with the plant-wide rate and departmental rates, talaga mas accurate siya. Okay. So, let's have this another problem. Ito po yung nasa original handout natin. Okay. So, here is our problem. Ang tanong po dito, calculate the unit cost. And the unit selling price for each product using plant-wide, departmental, and ABC. Okay. Now, ang una yung natin gawin, compare muna natin yung overhead rates nila. Using plant-wide rate, compute natin yung overhead rate nito. So again, magkano ba yung total overhead natin? Nakabold naman, madali makita. So ito po yun, total overhead rate natin. So 720,000 divided by anong basis natin? Pag tinignan mo yung mga given natin, sabi rito, the Juno plant produces two calculators in its production departments, assembly and packaging. Information for the products is given below. Pag tinignan mo yung mga possible na cost drivers natin, yung mga yan, kahit hindi sabihin na examiner kung ano yung magiging basis natin, obvious po, it's more on direct labor hours. Pero siyempre, we have to uh, check muna ano ba yung pinapagamit ng examiner. Pero pag walang sinabi yung examiner, you are going to choose yung cost driver na may pinakamalaking figure. So in our case, 180,000 at base ito sa direct labor hours. Kaya ang rate natin kapag plant-wide po or traditional ang gagamitin natin would be 4 pesos per DLH. Okay? So that's our overhead rate. Now, kapag ang ginamit naman natin ay uh, departmental, kasi yung tatlo pinapakompare sa atin, departmental rates. So, ang rates natin ay per department. So, ano-ano ba yung departments natin? Sabi rito, assembly at saka packaging. For assembly and packaging, ang overhead rate natin would be so, ano ba yung overhead ng assembly? Ito po, 216,000. 216,000. Divided by, ano ang basis natin sa assembly? Pag tinignan mo po, DLH niya 160, machine hours niya 10. So mukhang obvious po na DLH ang gagamitin natin, 160,000. But then again, uunahin mo kung ano yung sasabihin ng examiner. Kung walang sinabi, choose the one with the higher or with the highest figure. So ang A natin ay, ang ating overhead rate for assembly ay 1.35 per DLH. So, pag nag-plant-wide ka pala, okay naman kay assembly. Pero, pag tinignan mo si packaging, ang overhead niya ay 504,000. 
Pero ang driver ay machine hours instead of PLH divided by 80,000. So ang rate natin under packaging would be 6.30 per machine hour. That's the overhead rate. Okay. Kapag ABC naman ang gina ginamit natin, so ilang activities na meron tayo, binigay dito, setting equipment, moving material, machining, and inspection. So we have SE na lang, moving material, machining, inspection. Let's compute for the uh, overhead rates. Pag SE or setting equipment, ito po overhead niya, nakahimay po, pero ang total pa rin ay 720,000. Kung tinignan mo po pala yung uh, sa departmental, 216 plus 504, 720,000 pa rin. So, same total pa rin ng overhead naman. So, 240,000 <clears throat> divided by setting equipment. Hindi sinabi kung ano yung basis natin. Pero obvious po yan na based on the number of setups. So, divided by 100. So, ang rate po natin ay 24 per setup. Okay. Ayan yung rate natin under setting equipment. Moving material, it's 120,000 divided by, anong basis natin? Number of moves. So we have 300 moves divided by 300. So ang ating rate dito ay 400 per move. Ayan. Next, for machining, it's more than machine hours, of course. So machining, that's 200,000 Divided by, yun ba machine hours natin? Ayun, 90,000. So that would be uh, 2.22 per machine hour. That's our overhead rate. And for inspection, it's more on inspection hours. We have 18,000 inspection hours. So ang overhead natin ay 160,000 divided by uh, 18,000 na machine uh, uh, inspection hours. So that would be magkano to? 8.89 per inspection hour. Okay? So makikita natin mas maraming overhead rates sa ABC so we can say na mas accurate sa ABC as compared to the two. Pag nirank mo, pinaka-accurate. Pangalawa, at least accurate yung plant-wide rate natin. Okay, so let's now go dun sa mismo question. Yung unit cost and unit selling price under each of the methods. So unayin natin yung traditional. Tandaan natin yung cost natin, 4 pesos per DLH. So next tayo. Okay, so uh, yung product natin, dadaan man siya na assembly and packaging or dadaan man siya na activities na to, basta ang overhead niya, iisa lang ang rate na ginagamit natin. So to compute... For the products that we have, we have product na deluxe at saka regular. Unahin natin si deluxe. DM and DL, actually prime cost yung ibinigay. For deluxe, that's 160,000. 160,000. For your OH, isa lang ang rate natin. <clears throat> if you remember, if you, or if you go back, that's 4 per DLH. So balik tayo. So 4 per DLH. Ilan ba ang DLH ng the last we have 20,000 okay so kaya naman <coughs> excuse me kaya naman multiply natin ng 20,000 so that's 80,000 so immediately we are able to compute for the cost of your deluxe magkano po total cost natin ay oops it's 240,000 240,000 so, unit, ang tinatawang pa, unit cost at unit selling price. So, divided by the number of units, ilang units ang ating deluxe. Ayun, 2,000 units. Divided by 2,000. So, ang unit cost po natin ay, magkano? 120 pesos per unit. Ang selling price natin per unit would be 120. Sabi po rito, markup is 40%. 40% po yung markup natin. So again, if the problem is silent, the markup is based on sales. Kaya naman, i-divide po natin to ng 60%. So the answer is 200 pesos. That's the selling price per unit. Okay. 
if the markup is 40% on cost, ang gagawin natin, 120 times 1.4. Kaso ang sabi rito, markup is 40%, meaning that is based on sales. Okay. So for regular, let's compute for the unit cost and selling price per unit. So we need the prime cost again. Ang prime cost natin for regular ay 1.5 billion. And then ROH is 4 times. Ilan po ba ang DLH ng uh, regular? Ang DLH nyan ay 160,000. Ayan. So with that, 640,000 po yung ating total overhead. So ang total cost natin ay 2,140,000. Tinatanong ang unit cost, i-divide po natin ang number of units produced ng regular. That's 20,000. Divided by 20,000. So that will give you 107 per unit. That's our unit cost. Okay? And then pag selling price ulit ang tinanong, so that would be 107 uh, divided by 60%. So that will give you Selling price na 178.33. Okay? So that's for traditional or plant-wide rate. Let's now go to uh, departmental. So under departmental, so ganun lang din, deluxe. Ano ba yung prime cost ng deluxe? That's 160,000. Pero pagdating sa ating uh, overhead, dalawa yung rates natin. Yung rate natin <clears throat> for uh, assembly and packaging, we have 1.3 per DLH. Kay packaging, 6 point, uh, wait lang, 1.35 rather. Ayan, 1.35 per DLH, tapos so packaging 6.3 per MH. Kaya naman, hahanapin natin yung actual na DLH ng assembly ni Deluxe. Okay, so assembly, tapos si Deluxe, ilang DLH niya? 10,000. Ayan. Tapos kay packaging, machine hours ang hanap natin. So ilan kay Deluxe? 8,000. Okay, times 8,000. Kaya naman, ang total overhead natin dito ay 63,900. Kaya, ang total cost natin ay 223,900. And to answer the question, divided by 2,000, ang unit cost po natin ay, magkana to? 111.95. That's the unit cost. At ang selling price per unit is equal to 111.95 divided by 60%. So that will give you, magkana to? 186. 0.50. So that's the selling price per unit kapag departmental yung gamit natin. Magkano sa plant-wide? Balik natin, 200 pesos ang bentahan. Magkano sa deluxe? 186.5. So medyo overstated tayo kay plant-wide or traditional as compared to deluxe. Dapat 186.5 lang. So sa ka maniniwala? Kay deluxe. Pero kung mabibenta mo naman talaga yan ng 200, ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung kita mo if you make use of the uh, the departmental rate. Pero hindi po yun absolute rule. Ang sinasabi lang natin, mas malapit kasi sa katotohanan yung cost ng, ng departmental as compared to plant-wide rate. Okay? Pero wala pong rule na sinabi na mas mababa ang, ang uh, departmental na overhead rates or na cost kumpara dun sa traditional. Wala pong ganung rule. Ang sinabi lang natin, mas malapit sa katotohanan yung departmental or more overhead rates na ginagamit. Okay. For regular, so we have uh, prime cost uli natin na 1.6 million, uh, 1.5 million rather. Ayan. And then for overhead, it's 1.35 and it's 6.30. Multiply po natin. Ano ba yung DLH ng regular under assembly? Assembly, DLH ng regular, it's 150,000. So, multiply natin 150,000. Tapos, ang packaging, we have regular na machine hours. Machine hours ng regular na 
6,000. Ayan. So, ang total na overhead natin in that case is 656,100. So, ang total cost natin ay 2,156,100. So, pag tinulong unit cost, divide mo ito ng 20,000 units. So, ang unit cost po natin ay 107.81. Okay? So, anong selling price natin? So, that will be 107.81 divided by 60%. So, the answer is 179.68. So, that's your selling price per unit. Magkano sa plant-wide? 178.33 magkano sa departmental 179.68 medyo malapit lang naman okay this time ABC naman po tayo so for deluxe ganun po ulit prime cost is 160,000 and then ROH marami tayong OH so, yung kanina, it's 2,4 per set up. Tapos, 400 per move. And then, we also have 2.22 per machine hour. And we have 8.89 per inspection hour. Yan po yun nandun sa ating first slide ng problem na yan. Okay. So, ang gawin natin, multiply lang natin sa mga actual nung mga ng deluxe. So, actual setup niya ay 60. Tapos, number of moves, 180 sa si deluxe. And then, machine hours ni deluxe, ito po yung sinasabi ko, 60 and 180. The machine hours ni deluxe, it's 10,000. Inspection hours ni deluxe, 2,000. Ayan. So, from there, makukuha natin total OH natin na magkano to? 255 980 Medyo malaki ang OH under ABC. So, ang total cost natin ay 415,980. Yan yung total cost natin. Ang unit cost natin, i-divide po natin ito ng, ano, ng 2,000. So, kaya ang unit cost mo ay 207.99. Oops! Unit cost pa lang yan. Ang SPU natin would be 207.99 divided by 60%, 346.65. Highlight ko lang. Dito, unit cost computed in ABC is 207.99. Balik lang tayo kay plant wide rate. Okay, PWR or traditional costing method, yung 200, which is even lower than the cost of under ABC. Ibig sabihin, bentahan na to, SPU na to. So, hindi mo man lang pala na-recover yung cost mo. Kung gagamit ka ng plant wide rate, medyo mamimislead ka talaga. So, Bebenta mo ng 200 under plant white pero sabi ni ABC, ang cost niya 207.99 doon pa lang lugi ka na agad. So ano gagamitin natin? O, ano mas paniniwalaan natin? Of course, ABC. But then again, ABC mas costly siya kumpara kasi kay uh, plant white or traditional. Kaya lang syempre, uh, if you want to identify yung true cost of the product or if you want to be nearer sa true cost of the product, you will use ABC as compared to uh, ay kesa kay traditional. Ayan. So, pakita natin yung kay regular. So, prime cost is 1.5 million 1.5 million. Ah, buuin natin. Prime cost is 1.5 million. Ang OH natin ay 24,400, 2.22, 8.89. Multiply po ulit natin with the respective na actual level of activities. 2, 4 times ilang setup, kay regular 40. Ilang moves, kay regular 120. Ilang machine hours? 80,000. Ayan. Ilang uh, inspection hours? 16,000. Ayan po. So, total OH natin, pag kinompute natin yung apat na yan, that would give you 463,840. So, with that, ang total cost po natin ay 1,963,840. Ang tinatanong ay unit cost, divide po natin ng... 20,000. So therefore, ang unit cost po natin ay 98.19. Ayan.
Magkano SPU? So, SPU would be 98.19 divided by 60%. So, that would give you uh, 163.65. So, that would be your selling price per unit under the uh, ABC method. Any questions so far? Voila. So, we will just continue with the next topic. It's service cost allocation. So, tatlo yung possible na methods that we can use. It, we can make use of direct, step, and algebra. Okay. So, ano ba yung service cost allocation? If you remember yung OH natin, hindi kasi lahat na incur sa uh, production department. Okay. So, since hindi lahat na incur sa production department, ano ba yung example na? Hindi ba yung mga sabi natin noon, yung sweldo ng janitor, kapag ang nililinis niya ay production area, yung cost niya ay part ng overhead. Kaya lang, yung sweldo ng janitor, hindi naman naka-include sa cost ng production department. Nandun siya sa, swel sa total cost ng, ng payroll ng uh, mga taga-maintenance department or housekeeping, kung ano man yung tawag nila sa department na nandun yung janitors. Ibig sabihin, kung wala sa production uh, department, yung cost na yun, hindi mo siya ma-account o hindi siya may include na cost ng product unless you allocate papunta dun sa uh, operating departments natin. Another example, yung sweldo ng mga nagme-maintain ng equipments ng mga engineers natin. Yung engineers natin kapag nire-repair nila ay yung equipments na nasa production area, part ng overhead. Kaya lang, uh, kaya lang, yung sweldo ng mga engineers natin ay nando sa maintenance department again. So ang gagawin natin from the maintenance department, pupunta siya or i-allocate natin papunta sa operating departments. Kaya po nagkaroon tayo ng mga methods na to we allocate the overhead na nandun sa ibang department papunta sa operating department using either direct step or your favorite na algebraic method. Okay. So, we have direct, step, and algebraic. Sometimes, ang tawag natin sa step ay sequential. Sequence. From the term itself, step, sequence. So, sana hindi malito. Kasi minsan nabibigay ko sa exam sequential, pero ang ginagamit ay algebraic. Kasi ang algebraic, ang other term ay simultaneous. Kasi letter S din kasi. Kaya minsan nalilito yung iba. Pinagawa ko lang sequential, nagpakahirap, nag-algebraic. So, remember, kapag step, sequential po siya. Pag algebraic, it's either simultaneous or reciprocal po yung method natin. Okay. Ano ba ang difference or paano ba nag allocate using direct step and algebraic? So, we have your service department, S1 and S2. Papunta sa operating department or production department na production 1 and production 2. May kanya-kanyang overhead kasi yung overhead po na meron tayo na nandun sa dep service department 1, department 2, depart uh, production 1, production 2. Kasi possible nga sabi natin maraming activities or departments. Kapag direct method ang ginamit natin, anong service department ang una natin nga allocate? Actually kahit ano. Okay? So pag inallocate mo si S1, mapupunta siya directly kay P1 at saka kay P2. Pag ang inallocate mo naman ay si S2, S2, mamayos natin yung si S2, mapupunta siya directly kay P1 at saka kay P2. At the end of the allocation method, dapat zero na si S1, zero si S2, mapupunta o malilipat kay P1 at saka kay P2. Okay, so ganun po yung direct method. Diretso po sa ating production departments yung ating uh, overhead. Yung na-allocate natin na overhead. Pero, kapag step ang ginamit natin, ang mangyari dito, S1, S2, P1, P2. Una natin yung allocate Siyempre, kung ano sinabi sa problem. Pero, walang sinabi yung problem, si S1 at S2, kung ano yung mas malaki sa kanila, uunahin natin. Halimbawa, mas malaki sa S2, 
So S2 unahin natin, e minus natin yung amount niya. Diba? Malilipat po siya kay S1, P1, at P2. Yes po, makaka-receive si S1. So kaya nga step, unahin natin pinakamataas and then allocate natin dun sa, sa mga other departments. And then later on, allocate natin si S1. Pag inallocate natin si S1, magkasama na yung galing sa S2 at saka yung sarili niya overhead. Wala nang matatanggap si S2, diretso na po siya kay P1 at saka kay P2. Kaya at the end of the allocation, nadagdagan mo si S1, zero pa rin yan. S2, zero. P1 and P2, na-allocate na or nalipat na sa kanya yung overhead from S1 and S2. Before and after allocation, yung total overhead po natin should be equal sa total overhead then after allocation. Ibig sabihin, hindi dapat magbabago. So, magkaroon man ng difference yung before and after na total natin sa overhead, mga due to rounding off lang. Kasi, minsan talaga, hindi may iwasan, may mga, sa computations natin, may mga points na uh, nag-round off talaga tayo. Using algebraic method, just to differentiate, ayan, S1, S2, P1, P2. So, check, asterisk, check, check. Sino na yun natin allocate? Actually, kahit alin na So, S1 na lang and S2. Pero, pag inallocate mo si S1, mapupunta kay, S, kay uh, S2, P1, and P2. Pag inallocate mo si S2, syempre dapat kasama yung na-receive niya ka, galing kay S1. Pero ang makaka-receive niya ay si S1 ulit. P1 and P2. So with that, hindi natin alam magkano ba ito talagang ina-allocate natin na amount papunta sa ibang departments. Kaya nga gagamit tayo na algebra. Kasi may dalawang unknowns po tayo. Hindi natin alam kung magkano yung dalawa na yan. So dalawang unknowns, dalawang equation po establish natin to solve for the two unknowns. So once na na-complete natin yung unknowns na yan, so i-distribute na natin sa other departments, whether service or production departments. If you will notice, sa direct, from the term itself, papunta diretso kay production. Wala nang natatanggap ang S1, S2 sa isa't isa. Sa step, yung may pinakamalaking uh, overhead, makakatanggap mo na yung isang service department. And then later on, mawawala din naman yung overhead ng lahat ng service departments kasi malilipat kay production departments. Sa algebraic, na mas makatotuwa na naman talaga yung sitwasyon na syempre, itong maintenance or ito pang isang department na to silang dalawa, nagkakaroon din naman talaga ng service sa isa't isa. Hindi naman lahat talaga papunta lang kay P1 at saka kay P2. Kaya naman, uh, syempre, mas, ma mas complicated lang computation, mas challenging lang naman ng konti yung computation na algebraic, pero it is more accurate compared to direct and even compared with the step method. So sa kanilang tatlo, pinaka-accurate sa algebraic, pangalawa si step, at pinaka-huli si direct method. Pinaka-simple, pero syempre, ito yung pinaka-malapit sa katotohanan ng senaryo, yung algebraic. Alright, so let's take a look at this example. So, ito ay additional problem po natin. So, BB Company has two service departments, HR and uh, repairs and maintenance and two producing departments A and B. HR allocates its direct cost based on the number of employees. So, ibig sabihin, identify mo ulit yung cost driver ng HR so, H, na, ng mga service departments natin. So, HR, obvious naman, the number of employees talaga ang pagbabasihan. Repairs and maintenance, based on the repair hours. So, medyo madadama mo naman talaga kung ano yung cost driver natin. So, sabi sa number one, using direct method. Sabi sa number two, using step method. Sabi sa number three, sequential. Actually, yung two and three, pares lang. Diba? Step and sequential. And number four, using algebraic. In other words, perform natin yung tatlong allocation methods na na-mention natin a while ago. Okay. So, let's have this. Uh, let's answer the first one, direct method. At tinatanong lang po yung total OH cost of department A. Pero i-perform na po natin ang buo. 
Okay, so using the rig method, so we have H, R, A, and B. So we have 200,000, 400, 1, 2, and 800,000. Ayan. So, ano unahin natin i-allocate kay H at kay R kapag direct method? Wala namang rule. Kahit alin. Kasi diretso naman siya kay A and B. So, unahin na natin si H. So, minus 200,000. Yung HR, paano natin i-allocate? Based on the number of employees. Sino makaka-receive? A and B lang naman. So, ilan ang number of employees niya? 500. Ilan dito? 300. So, 500... 300. Ano total? 800. So, over 800. Over 800. So, yun yung allocation uh, factor natin papunta kay A. So, 500 over 800 ng 200,000. Uh, yan ay 125,000. 300 over 800 ng 200,000. Yan ay 75,000. Next, allocate natin si repairs and maintenance. So, that's 400,000. Minus 400,000 here. Mapupunta kay A and B uli. Based on repair hours, 50 and 100. So, 50, 100. Ano total? 150. 150. Yung total lang po ng mga kaka-receive. So, 50 over 150 ng 400,000 ay 200. Uh, no, it's 100. 100. 33,333. And then for B, 266,667. Ayan. So, ang tinatanong po ay total cost ng A. So, H after allocation 0. After allocation 0. So, total cost ng A ay 1,458,333. Then for B, 1,458,333. It's 1,141,667. So, ang answer po natin dito ay 1,458,333. Okay, so that's the answer. Sometimes, ang tanong lang po ay the total OH allocated to Department A. Kapag ganito po ang tanong, ito lang po ang sagot natin doon. Yung sum nung dalawa na yan. Ulitin ko po ha. Kapag ang tanong ay total OH allocated to Department A. So 125 and 133, that's 258,333. Eh ang tanong po kasi dito ay total OH cost of Department A. So kaya naman, kasama na po yung original na OH niya prior to allocation. And just to check, ang total po ng OH natin before allocation ay 2.6 million. Ito po pala given na. Pero if you add the two here sa ilalim, it's still 2.6 million. So dapat before and after allocation, equal po yung dalawa na yan. Okay, so that's direct method. This time, let's make use of the step or sequential method. Ang tinatanong po, service cost allocated to B and total OH of Department A. So we have H, R, A, and B. So sulat lang uli natin. So 200,000, 1.2 million. Ayan. So total is still 2.6 million. So sino unahin natin? Unahin natin yung repairs and maintenance kasi mas malaki siya. Okay? Pero syempre, check mo muna yung problem. Baka may sinabi kung aling department yung unahin natin i-allocate. So again, pag wala, piliin natin yung mas malaki. So, minus 400,000. Repairs and maintenance. Anong basis natin ng ating allocation? It is based on the number of repair hours. Pero step to or sequential, Pag inallocate natin si repairs and maintenance, sino makaka-receive? Yung tatlo, HR, A, at saka C, B. So ano-ano yung meron sila? 50, 50, 100. So 50, 50, 100. Ano yung total natin? 200. Over 200, over 200, 
over 200. So, if you say, yung 400,000, 50 over 200 yan kh. So, that's 100,000. Ka, it's also 100,000. Kb, it's also, uh, it's 200,000. Ayan. Uh, Pamute po. Uh, Harleen. Pakimute po. Thank you. Ayan. So, pag inallocate na natin yung H, kasama na yung na-receive niya galing kay R. It's 300,000. Okay? So, paano natin na-allocate yung 300,000? Based on the number of employees. 500 and 300. Papunta na lang kay A and B. Hindi na babalik kay R. So, that's 500 and 300. Ano yung total natin? 800. 800. Kaya ang allocated KA, 300,000 times 500 over 800, it's 187,500. Dito naman po ay 112,500. Kaya ang total po natin ay... Harleen, pa-mute po. <laughs> Hardin, pamute po. Ayun. So, going back for A, ang total cost natin kay A ay 1,487,500. For B, it's 1,112,500. Okay, so let's answer the question. Ano daw yung service cost allocated to Department B? So, ang tinatanong po ay allocated to Department B. So, hindi ito ang sagot, kundi ito. Yung allocated lang galing kay R at saka kay H. So, the answer is 312,500. Okay, so 312,500. Next question. Total OH of Department A. So, the answer is ito na po. 1,487,500. So, yan po yung ating total overhead. Ayan. Next, using algebraic method. So, tinatanong yung total OH of department B. So, using algebraic method, so we have H. Let's see natin. So we have H, R, A, and B. One point two million and eight hundred thousand. Ayan. So ano na natin? Kait alin? So ano kaya natin si H? Pag inalocate natin si H based on the number of employees, kini na mapupunta sa kanilang tatlo. R, A, and B. Anong is 200, 500, 500, 300. Oops. Nagkahang. Ayan. 300. So, total po na ang denominator natin ay diba? So, that would be uh, 1,000 1,000 1,000 and 1,000 okay if we try to simplify pwede naman po na hindi na ganyan kalaki so ang gawin natin itong 200 over 1,000 it is 2 so gawin na lang natin para mas simple 0.2 500 over 1,000 it's 0.5 Okay, 300 over 1,000 is 0.3. So, bagoy na natin, gawin na natin 0.3. So, we're just trying to simplify. Pag si R naman ang inallocate natin si repairs and maintenance, so based on the repair hours, 50, 50, and 100. So, ang total natin ay 200. 50 over 200 kh, that's 0.25, diba? 
50 over 200 KA, that's also 0.25. 100 over 200 KB, that's 0.5. Okay. So ngayon, hindi natin alam magkano ba yung allocate natin galing kay H. Ayan. At galing kay R kasi may matatanggap din sila sa isa't isa. Kaya ang gagawin natin using algebra. So let's compute for the value of H at saka ni R. Initially, si H may 200,000. Si R may 400,000. Ayan. May matatanggap si H galing kay R. Nung inallocate si R, matatanggap niya ay 0.25. So, 0.25 na uh, R. Si R naman, 400,000 plus. Ano ba receive ni R galing kay H? It's 0 0.2. 0 0.2 H. Kaya naman, yung R natin is 400,000 plus 0.2. Yung H natin, pag sinabstitute natin to it's 200,000 plus 0.25 R. Ayan. So, from here, R is equal to 400,000 plus 40,000 plus, pag multiply natin ito, 0.05 R. Ayan. Kaya ang sinimplify natin, hindi pa din yung 0.05 R. So, R is equal to 463, 158. At ang H natin, pag sinabsitute natin dito yung 463, 158, H would be equal to uh, 315, 789. Ayan. Yan yung i-allocate natin dito. So, 315, 789. 0.2 will go to R. 0.2 is 63, 158. So, pupunta dito ay 63,158. Ayan. Pupunta dito ay 157,895. That's 0.5 times 315,789. And then 0.3 times 315,789 is 94,737. Ayan. And then for our 463,158. 463. 158. Ayan. Makikita niyo po, dito pa lang, magsisiro na yung R. Pag hindi po nagsiro yan, ibig sabihin may mali po sa ginawa ninyo. 0.25 of that will go here. That would be 115,790. Yun lang. Dito may natirang piso. Pero, that's just due to rounding off. Kaya nagkaroon ng piso. Piso lang naman yan, ayana po natin. And then for this one, 115,790. And then for this one, it's 231,579. Okay. So, total OH of A is 1473,685. Pero ang pinakatanong natin ay yung kay B. So, it's 1,126,316. So, that's the answer in number 4. Total OH ni B. So, ang prior to allocation, it's 2.6 million. After allocation, ang answer po natin ay 2,600,002. May counting difference lang due to rounding off. Okay lang po yun. Okay. So, pag gumamit ka naman ng system or ng Excel, wala naman po magiging difference yung before and after allocation. Okay, so any questions so far? We will now proceed. I think this is the last problem. Okay. Ang question po dito, we are asked to determine the Kares bid price using direct step and algebraic methods. Parang tinatanong selling price. Kumbaga, selling price ng product out of the service cost allocation, di ba ang service cost allocation, ang makocompute natin ay OH. A-add lang natin yung prime cost natin, which is your DM and DL. We will come up with the cost. Tapos, i-consider natin yung markup. We will come up with your selling price or bid price na hinahanap sa problem. Okay? We have support departments, maintenance, power, cooking, naman yung uh, underproducing departments, cooking at saka packaging and freezing. Okay. So, may kanya-kanyang overhead cost, 
for maintenance, power, cooking, packaging, and freezing. Tinatanong, magkano yung bid price natin? So, let's read the problem before we continue to the next slide. So, Curry Foods Company specializes in the production of frozen dinners. The first of the two operating departments cooks the food. The second is responsible for packaging and freezing the dinners. So, ito po yung tinutukoy nung problem. The dinners are sold by case and each case contain uh, 25 dinners. Two support departments, ito po yun, si maintenance and power. Budgeted data for the coming quarter are given below. The company does not separate fixed and variable costs. <clears throat> Sabi dito, the predetermined rate for cooking is computed based on machine hours. And then the direct labor hours are used for packaging and freezing. Sabi pa, the prime cost for one case of standard dinner total 16. So dito pa lang meron na kagad tayong prime cost na 16. Kasi nga, ang pinaka-focus natin is the determination of your overhead. It takes two machine hours to produce a case of dinners in cooking department. Possible po kasi na yung case na magagawa mo sa cooking at packaging ay hindi magkasindami kasi magkaibang department po sila. Hindi po magkasindami. So sabi rito, it takes two machine hours Ayan, two machine hours to produce a case of dinners in cooking department. Ilang machine hours po meron tayo? 40,000. So therefore, ilang cases yung nagagawa natin under cooking? So divided by two, ang nagawa natin na cases sa cooking ay 20,000 cases. Okay? Importante po yan mamaya sa computation natin ng bid price or ng unit cost. Next, uh, 0.5 direct labor hour to process a case of standard dinners. 0.5 of direct labor hours. Ilang direct labor hours natin? 30,000. So, 0.5 ang ginagawa natin. Divide natin ng 0.5. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong 60,000 cases naman na nagagawa sa packaging and freezing. Na nagawa, okay? Recently, the Air Force has requested a bid on the three-year contract that will supply standard frozen dinners to Minuteman missile officers and staff on duty in the field. The locations of the missile sites were remote and the Air Force had decided that frozen dinners were the most economical means of supplying food to personnel on duty. So the bidding policy of Carrier Foods is full manufacturing costs plus 20%. So, ibig sabihin, to come up with the SPU, yung cost natin, multiply natin ng 1.2 para makuha natin yung pinakatanong sa exam. Okay? So, let's make use of the direct method muna. Tapos later, step and then algebra. Okay? So, using direct method, so we have uh, Ano ang mga departments that we have? So we have maintenance. M. We have power. We have cooking. We have packaging and freezing. Ayan po yung ating mga departments. So ang OH po natin dito ay OH. 340,000. 200,000, 75,000, and 55,000. So using direct method, kahit alin naman unahin natin, unahin na natin si M. So minus 340,000. Maintenance, paano natin i-allocate? Balik lang tayo sa problem. Ang maintenance po, kung mapapansin nyo, walang sinabi kung paano i-allocate. Pero if you look at the given here, machine hours kaya or kilowatt hours. It's machine hours. Why? Kasi makita mo, sa given natin, ang meron lang tayo ay sa power, cooking, and packaging, and freezing for machine hours. So most likely, sinasabi ng problem o sinasuggest sa problem na hindi mo talaga pwedeng gamitin yung kilowatt hours kasi based on the available data na meron tayo. Okay? So pag nag-allocate tayo, di ba kailangan meron tayong basis dun sa mga mapupuntahan ng cost natin. Walang mapupu ang mapupuntahan lang for maintenance ay power, cooking, and packaging and freezing at yun lang yung may data ng machine hours. Okay?
Okay, at saka, ang maintenance naman is most likely based on the machine hours. Okay, so we have 40 and 20. So if... Yeah, so 40 and 20. 40 and 20 over 60, yung total po niya. So magkano na punta kay M? So that's 226,667. Magkano kay uh, B? It's 113,333. Ayan. If we allocate now P based on kilowatt hours, so minus 200,000, Ilang kilowatt hours ba meron kay cooking? 100,000. 100, kay packaging? 80,000. So balik tayo. It's 100. It's 80. Tapos over the total ng 180. <clears throat> 180. So magkano po dito? It's 111,000. 111. Dito naman po ay 88,889. Ayan. So, ang total cost natin for C, that would be 412,778. Ang total cost natin, or overhead pala, total overhead natin for packaging and freezing ay 257, 222. Overhead po yan. E overhead per case. So, ang cases po natin ay 20,000 kay C, kay cooking, then 60,000 naman po yung nagawa natin kay packaging and freezing. So, ang overhead per case po natin would be 20.64 kay cooking and then 4.29 kay packaging and freezing. Kaya ang total overhead po natin ay 24.93. Kaya pag tinanong yung bid price, ang prime cost po natin ay 16. <clears throat> ang overhead po natin ay 24.93. So ang unit cost or ang cost per case natin ay 40. 0.93. Kaya ang SPU natin would be 40.93 times 1.2. So the answer would be 49.12. So that's the bid price under the direct method. <clears throat> okay. So this time, we will go to step method. So under step, we still have uh, maintenance, Power C P F. Anong unay natin sa service department sa atin? Wala naman sila sa exam. So unay natin yung M kasi mas malaki siya. So minus 340,000. Ang mga karesim po ay si P, C at P, F. Kaya naman, maintenance ang ina-allocate natin. Balik tayo sa problem. So, maintenance, ilang kay P? 40. 40 kay cooking. 20 kay packaging and freezing. So, ang total natin ay 100. So, 40 over 100. 40 over 100 din. And 20 over 100 kay packaging and freezing. So, 40% ng 340 ay magkano ito? 100... 36,000. Okay. So, ito, 136,000 din. At ito ay 68,000. 20 over 100 times 340,000. And then, pag kinumpit si P, so, kasama na yung na-receive ni P e kay, galing kay M. So, 336,000 yung i-allocate natin. Okay. Ano mapupunta kay C at P, F? Ang kilowatt hours ng C ay 100,000. 80 kay packaging and freezing over 180 ayan so magkano kay cooking that would be 186 667 kay packaging and freezing 80 over 180 times 336 it's 149 333 ayan so ang total cost po natin under C that would be 397 Six six seven. Okay, packaging and freezing two seventy two three hundred thirty three. Again, to get the overhead per case, divide mo to na twenty thousand case. That would give you overhead natin na nineteen point eight eight. So abila divide natin na sixty thousand cases. So that will give you four point fifty four 
pesos per case. Yan. So, ang total overhead natin ay 24.42. So, from here, prime cost natin ali ay 16. Ang overhead ay 24.42. So, therefore, ang unit cost natin ay 40.42 or ang cost per case natin. And again, SPU is equal to 40.42 times 1.2. So the answer is 48.50. So that's the bid price kapag ang ginamit nating method ay step. Okay? And lastly, what if we make use of the algebraic method? So same problem pa rin. So we have M power cooking, packaging, and freezing. Okay, so we have 340,000, 200,000, 75, and 55,000. Ano unahin natin allocate? Kahit alin. So M, based on, so maintenance based on uh, machine hours. So balik tayo. Pag inallocate mo si M, sino makaka-receive? Yung tatlo. P, C, N, at saka P, F. Based on machine hours, ilang machine hours ng P, C, and F. So, we have 40, 40, and 20. Baba. So, 40, 40, and 20, 40 over 100. Or, pwede naman na 0.4 na lang. Okay? So, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 20 over 100 is 0 0.2. Ayan. Pag inalocate natin si P, so, magkano yung tatanggalin kay P? Hindi pa natin alam. So, paano yung allocate si P? Kilowatt hours. Angat. Ilan lang kilowatt hours ni M? 20, 180. So, over 200. So, 20 over 200 is 0.1. 100 over 200 is 0.5. 80 over 200 is 0.4. So, yun yung gagamitin natin. Baba ulit tayo. So, this is 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0.4. Ayan. Since hindi natin alam kung magkano talaga yung a-allocate natin papunta kay CNPF, may dalawang unknowns, we are going to make use of two equations. So, gawin natin. M is initially meron 340,000. Meron siya matatanggap galing kay P. Nung in-allocate natin si P, 0.1 ang matatanggap niya. 0.1 P. Nung P naman ang kinocompute natin, 200,000. May matatanggap siya galing kay M. Nung in-allocate si M, matatanggap niya 0.4. M. So, if we substitute this M to this one, so P is equal to 200,000 plus 0 0.4, 340,000 plus 0.1 P. Ayan. So, we have uh, P is equal to 200,000 plus 0.4 ng, ng 340 is uh, 136,000 plus 0.04p. Ayan. And then, ayan. and then, pag sinimplify na natin ito, magiging 0.96p kasi 0.04 lilipat sa kabila. So 0.96p is equal to 336,000. So p is equal to, magkano to? 350,000. So, ito na yung amount ng P na i-allocate natin. So, substitute natin dito yung P na 350,000. So, ang M mo ay 375,000. Kaya, i-allocate natin si M, 375,000 po ito. 0.4 will go to P and that is 136, uh, 150,000. Okay, magkano to? 0.4 times 375, it's 150,000. This is also 150,000. And this is 75,000. And then, ang amount ng P na i-allocate natin ay 350. 350,000. Tamang-tama naman. Ito ay magiging 0. 
Pag ginalocate natin, 0.1 will go here, 35,000. Tama din po, ito ay zero. Again, pag hindi zero or uh, may malaking difference po sa ating uh, total dito, may mali po sa ginawa natin. So going back here, 0.5 of 350 is 175,000. And 0.4 of 350 is 140,000. So magkano yung total cost natin kay C? That's 400,000. Okay, packaging and freezing, it's 270,000. Ayan. And to get the OH per case, ilang cases dito? 20,000. So ito ay 20 pesos per case. Yung overhead natin. And for this one, divided by 60,000. So we have, magkano to? 4.5 per case. Kaya ang total OH natin ay 24 0.50 Kaya ang prime cost 16 OH 24.5 So therefore, ang total uh, ang unit cost natin ay 40.50 Kaya ang SPU natin would be 40.50 times 1.2 So the answer is 48.60 So gusto lang natin pakita na iba-ibang methods possible na iba-iba talaga magiging sagot pero alin na mas malapit sa katotohanan that would be the algebraic method